Welcome, welcome. It's my dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And it is May 22nd, so it is day four of Invictus Launch Week. And so I missed a video yesterday. I was a little too ill to put one out. But I'm coming back today with one or two videos for you. So we're going to start off with the sales page and then the second video should probably be a walk around the convention floor as long as the game lets me do it. As you know, the game is still uh, stable sometimes, not stable other times. So let's get into the sales. For day three and four, which is May 21st and 22nd, yesterday and today, is Aegis Dynamics. They have a large catalog of ships for uh, everybody to uh, try to purchase, including some of the big capitals like the Idris and the Javelin Destroyer. So let's get into all the ships that you can buy and what the pricing is on them. So we got the Avenger Stalker coming in at $60, the Avenger Titan at $55, and the Avenger, Avenger Titan Renegade at 75. Now these should offer uh, 10 year insurance on each one of them. The Avenger Warlock comes in at $85. Now this one has the EMP. So it's got the E-Warfare where you can um, shut down shields or completely shut down other ships uh, in the game if you can hit them with a well-timed EMP shot. Whereas the Titan Renegade and the Titan uh, both of these are, I believe, the uh, Bounty Hunter. I'm sorry, the Stalker is the Bounty Hunter version. The Titans are the cargo variants of the Avengers. Then you have the Eclipse at $300, which also comes uh, as a special War Bond offer. Uh, so you can upgrade it for a little cheaper than you would normally would. Uh, the Eclipse is a torpedo bomber, a stealth torpedo bomber. Uh, very good stealth. It's not going to be good in a heads up one on one fight. The size nine torpedoes that it carries are capable of taking down some pretty good sized ships. And it carries three of them uh, before you have to go back and rearm. So one of them can take out a hammerhead usually, uh, but it'll take more than three to take out an Idris. Then you have the Gladius, which is a tried and true light fighter. This is one of the most popular light fighters out there. $90, great deal for that ship. The Gladius Valiant, $110. Unless you're just a collector that wants this version of the Gladius, I would just stick with the regular Gladius. Uh, it'll save you 20 bucks. The Aegis Hammerhead. Uh, this is considered well they're calling it a heavy gunship it's really more of a corvette uh it's got six of these turrets that all have four size four rhino laser repeaters on them and it is great at anti-air or anti-spaceship combat uh it's a nice it's a fun ship to play with an org or with a group of players um, you, you, you have to play it with a group. Otherwise, it's kind of a useless ship for you. Uh, the pilot can only control missiles. That's it. Uh, and, of course, flying the ship. Uh, you'll need gunners to gun all of the other turrets. So if you've got a small group of players that are interested in doing, you know, anti-air or uh, taking on some, some smaller ships... Uh, this is definitely the way to go. You could take on other ships, even the size of a hammerhead, uh, in this thing and be okay. Uh, as long as everybody's pretty well coordinated with their shots, $725 for this behemoth. Then you've got the Idris P $1,500 on war bond. Uh, let's see what else they offer with it. Uh, 13, I'm sorry, 1300 on war bond, 1500 on, uh, credits. So as you can see, the war bonds have not sold out. If I had $1,300, I could still get one right now. Um, so it's it's available as of the time of me recording this, which is 9 a.m. Uh, then you have the Javelin, which is the massive destroyer, the biggest uh, ship 
that a player can own in-game uh, that is despawnable. $2,700 on Warbond, and they are still available, it looks like. That is amazing because uh, used to these things would sell out literally inside the first 20 seconds of going up. As you can see, the uh, credit version has sold out at $3,000. So if you're wanting to get your hands on a Javelin, you've got $2,700 laying around that you can afford to throw around. Uh, you can do that. This is going to be a, a large org capital ship. Uh, you're going to need to have a lot of guys to man this thing. Uh, honestly, my org has quite a few of these javelins. I'm not sure how we're going to man all of them. Uh, I know some of us are hoping NPCs can help us with that. Uh, but yeah, you're going to need a lot of people on board one of these for it to be an effective ship. Uh, don't even take it out if, if you're not going to plan to to defend it. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you're picking one of these up, uh, you, you want to make sure you have some friends to fill it out. Then we move back to the Nautilus, $725. Again, it's a Corvette class mine layer. Uh, pretty good size. It's got a size seven gun on the front of it as well. So it can actually damage capital ships with that gun. But the big thing about this one is the fact that it can uh, lay mines, pick them up, uh, disarm them. Uh, you know, you can, you can add mines that you find along the way and into your inventory, so to speak. Uh, if you can disarm it. Uh, so some drone gameplay goes along with this one. That's why we haven't seen it in game yet. Then we have the Redeemer at $325. This is a gunship. And they do mean the word gunship. It has guns everywhere. Uh, big ones. Really big guns. So definitely uh, if you have just a group of three or four guys, this is the ship for you. Uh, three or four guys that you know want to take on these little missions. Uh, you can have air superiority. You can land. Uh, it's got enough space in there that you could probably pick up some boxes and bring them in. Eventually, uh, they think they're supposed to have some sort of cargo module for this or a dropship module for it. Uh, we'll see. Originally, that's how it was, uh, I guess, marketed. Uh, now, uh, I mean, this is one of the coolest ships in the game, if you ask me. And it was made by we the fans more or less uh, before they implemented it and remade it and uh, fixed it up uh, for the game. And like I said, it's it's a fun ship to play with friends. Then you have the Retaliator, which they're making it a, a heavy gunship. This is the base model. Uh, the base model does not come with the torpedoes. It's just a bunch of guns. I mean, it's got one, uh, two, three, four, five, uh, something like six turrets with size three Panther repeaters on most of them. Um, like I said, originally this is a bomber, uh, which I, you know, you can see the torpedo bomber here at 275. If you get the base retaliator, you're going to have to get the modules as well. And I don't know if those are on sale this weekend or not, uh, but there's a bunch of different modules you can pick up for it and change them out, such as the torpedo bays. There's two torpedo bays on it. If you get the torpedo version, it's got six torpedoes. Originally, it had nine, so it's a little bit of a disappointment now, but six torpedoes that are all size nine. Uh, so you'll bef bef definitely be able to take down an Idris by yourself uh, if it doesn't know you're there, which is the, the key, right? It, you can't let it know you're there. Uh, it's going to see you from a long distance away. So uh, you definitely need somebody distracting the Idris while you land those valuable torpedo shots. Uh, then you have the Sabre at $170. This is a medium stealth fighter. Uh, right now, it's not the best you know, ship out there. Uh, eventually, they'll do some weapons and ship balance passes, and this ship will be a lot better than what it is uh, today. Then you have the Saber Comet. Again, it's a lot like the Gladiator earlier. $170 for the regular Saber. 
185 for the Comet version, which is just a different loadout and the paint scheme. Uh, if you want to save $15, just get the regular Saber. And then we have the Vanguard series of ships. This is the Harbinger, which is a... Uh, a it, it, the Vanguard is a heavy fighter, but the Harbinger is the bomber variant. So it comes with size 5 torpedoes, uh, which in themselves are not going to bring down something like an Idris, but you could definitely put some damage on uh, a big ship with torpedoes uh, of any size. And this thing is designed to go long distances, deploy its ordnance, and make it back um, with its valuable cargo, which is the pilot and gunner intact. Uh, so, yeah, $290 for the Harbinger. The Hopolite is a dropship variant of the Vanguard, $235. Now, I say dropship, it only really has about five seats in there for uh, Marines or whatever. So it's get in, get out really quick. The Sentinel is the e-warfare version. Right now it has an EMP. Uh, again, like the Warlock, if you can time a well-placed EMP shot, it can make a world of a difference in a fight. Um, so keep that in mind. If you are playing with one of these or planning to get one of these, you'll want to have somebody in the turret or at least plan on having an NPC run a turret eventually when that's available. The Vanguard Warden is the original heavy fighter, uh, so it should be the best in class when it comes to fighting other ships. Um, it comes with the Gatlin standard on the front with the four size twos, like all the other Vanguards, they all have the four size twos. They could be ballistics, they, they could be uh, disruptors, could be uh, energy weapons. It, it just depends on which Vanguard you get. Uh, and then, of course, it has the turret as well. Uh, 260 for that one. The Vulcan, this one's not in game yet. Uh, I know they're working on it, but you'll be able to do repairs. It can do refueling, and it can do rearming of other ships. So it's very much in the support role, and every fleet excuse me, is going to need a few of these uh, to help them along. So $200 for that ship. Uh, there you have it. Again, the upgrade that is available is for the Eclipse. And then you have the shirts that you can get that have been typical of this Invictus. The Aegis Complete Pack War Bond is $8,095. If you don't get the War Bond and you're doing credits, it'll cost you almost $1,000 more, uh, $900 more to be exact. Uh, $8,995. <clears throat> Good luck with that. <laughs> <coughs> if you're getting the Aegis pack, I will say that's one of the best packs you can get in the game uh, because you're going to have some of the best ships out there for sure. So what do you guys think of Aegis Day? Uh, are you having any problems in game? Again, I'm going to jump in game here in a moment and do some recording so you can see the cells room floor, the convention room floor. I shouldn't call it a cells room, right? Uh, but that's really what it is. This is all marketing, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you think of this year's Invictus Launch Week and Aegis's offerings? Uh, why do you think that the Idris P War Bond hasn't sold out yet and nor has the Javelin's War Bond offers. Why haven't they sold out yet? Uh, have, are we seeing a change in landscape of the people playing the game now? I mean, uh, used, like I said, used to these would sell out easily within the first 20 seconds of going up on the website. And they've been out for a while for that third wave. So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy, and I'll see you out in the verse.